What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE about a year after I originally got it, going over what I like about it, what I don't like, and whether or not it's still worth buying at this point. Now, as always, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I will be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get right into it. Now, with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, we are getting a really nice display here. This phone has a 6.4 inch 120 hertz dynamic AMOLED display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 411, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So in general, compared to a lot of the phones I cover on this channel, the S21 FE is really more of a higher end device, and the display is one area that really shows this. With the dynamic AMOLED, the colors and brightness are going to look really nice, the image is super high quality, the 1080p resolution makes everything look real nice and sharp, and even when it comes to stuff like the viewing angles, if you're outside in the sun for example, this phone is still going to be decently easy to see, which is definitely more than you can say for a lot of the more mid-range phones that have something like an IPS LCD, because in that kind of setting when you're in a really bright area, those phones are going to be a bit difficult to see. Whereas again, with the S21 FE, you're really not going to have that problem. And with the 120Hz refresh rate, the movement on the screen is going to be real fast and smooth, making the phone feel really premium overall. Now, the only area where some people might be a little disappointed here is probably the size. At 6.4 inches, I wouldn't call this small per se, especially compared to something like a typical iPhone or a Google Pixel 6a, for example. So in general, I want to say most phones in this price range are at least the price range this phone was originally in. It's quite a bit cheaper now. But when it comes to the displays you get with a typical entry-level flagship phone, like the base-level iPhone 13 or the Google Pixel 6a, compared to those phones, the S21 FE is a bit larger. But again, compared to the average smartphone in general, I feel like most of them, for Android phones at least, are around 6.5 inches. So yeah, the S21 FE is a little bit under average, but in my experience, unless you're really looking for a giant display like a Motorola Moto G stylus size display, then I feel like it's not really going to make a huge difference. But aside from that, really everything else about this display is great. The image quality again is really good, and with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio, we're getting a decently tall and narrow form factor. So if you're doing something like browsing the web, using social media, stuff like that, you'll be able to fit a decent amount of content on the screen without having to scroll too much. And if you're doing something in landscape mode like watching videos or looking at photos, you're going to get a nice immersive experience, things are going to look more cinematic, and in general, it definitely is going to look nice. So overall, if you are looking for a phone that has a really good display, then I do think the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is going to be a real good choice. And back when this phone first came out, sure, it was going for around seven, eight hundred dollars. But nowadays you can find it for four hundred or less. And while there are definitely still some cheaper phones that have really good displays too, in general, if you're consuming a lot of content and you want a more premium kind of experience, then I do think this phone is still going to be one of the better options. Now for storage, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE does have 128 gigabytes of internal storage, but unfortunately we're not getting micro SD card expansion here. Now, in my opinion, micro SD card expansion really only does so much, and I feel like for the average user, 128 gigabytes is going to be plenty of space anyway. So even though for me personally, I record all kinds of videos on this phone, so I would love to have micro SD card expansion, but honestly at the end of the day, it's really not that big a deal for the average user. If you're doing more normal activities, or even if you have a moderate amount of like games, apps, stuff like that. I do think 128 gigabytes is going to be perfectly fine. And if you do want more space, you can always get the version of this phone that has 256. And with that amount of storage, I feel like most people are probably not going to fill that up. So again, in general, unless you're recording all kinds of videos, especially like 4K videos and longer videos, things like that. In that case, yeah, storage might be a problem. But otherwise, unless you're really just dead set on getting micro SD card expansion, I feel like the storage on this phone for most people is going to be perfectly fine. For security features, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE does have face unlock, as well as a really nice in-display fingerprint scanner. Now, I personally haven't even used face unlock on this phone before, but as you can see, the fingerprint scanner does work really well. Definitely real fast and responsive, no issues at all, but of course, if you do want to use face unlock too, you always can, and honestly, surprisingly, compared to other entry-level flagship phones like the regular iPhone 13 or 14 and the Google Pixel 6a, out of those phones, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is actually the only one that has both a fingerprint scanner and face unlock, and while in my opinion, this is really kind of a minor detail because I don't really know a whole lot of people that actually use both, it is kind of interesting to see that with the iPhone SE, there's only a fingerprint scanner, with the regular iPhone 13 and 14, there's only face unlock, and with the Google Pixel 6a, there's also only a fingerprint scanner. So if you do want a little bit more flexibility for security features, 
features than compared to the other entry-level flagship phones, the S21 FE will have an advantage. Now, when it comes to the camera, this is another thing that really sets the S21 FE apart from pretty much any mid-range phone. With this phone, we got a real nice looking hole punch design for the front-facing camera. This camera is 32 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 12 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So in general, when it comes to features, this phone has pretty much everything. Sure, it doesn't have a macro camera, but with the telephoto lens, you can easily still get some really nice close-up detailed images. And despite not having a depth sensing camera, if you're coming from more of a mid-range phone, you might be expecting that. But Keep in mind, at this level, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE has such a good sensor, and compared to a mid-range phone, the hardware is just better in general, so at the end of the day, it really doesn't need one. When it comes to actual photo quality, I will say this is pretty much one of the best options you can possibly get for the money. With the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, being an entry-level flagship phone, you really are going to get flagship quality photos. So if you are really into taking photos, maybe you're taking lots of pictures for social media, for example, maybe you're some sort of content creator, or you just really like to take photos, if you are looking for a more affordable phone that has a really high quality camera, Camera, then maybe back in the day when this phone originally came out, being around seven or eight hundred dollars, it probably still would be a little bit pricey, but Again, nowadays, this phone is not nearly as expensive as it once was, and at the current price it's typically going for, it would be really hard to find a phone for the same amount that can take anywhere near as good pictures. So again, in general, if the camera is really important to you, the S21 FE is going to be a great choice for you. And then for video, this phone does have a max recording quality of 4K at 60 frames per second in both the rear and front cameras, and in my experience, the video quality is really good too. Like I said before, I've been using this phone to record pretty much all the videos on this channel since around February of 2022 and I would say the quality definitely comes out really nice. Whether you're recording in 1080p or 4K, it doesn't really matter. No matter what you do on this phone, the video quality is really good. So if that really is one of the main things you're doing with your camera, then again, I would definitely say for the money, this phone is definitely one of the best options. Now when it comes to RAM and processor, with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G processor. Now keep in mind, if you get the version of this phone that has 256GB of storage, you're also going to be getting 8GB of RAM instead. But this phone in my hand, and the one you're probably going to get from a carrier, does have 6GB of RAM. Now that being said, the performance on this phone is really good, pretty much what you would expect from a higher end device. So if you are going to be on your phone a lot, doing more demanding activities like high performance mobile gaming, in that case I do think this phone is going to be a really good choice. In my experience, having used this phone for well over a year, this is a really fast device and honestly there's really nothing I've done on it where I felt like I needed a faster phone. Sure, my iPhone 13, for example, is a bit faster technically on paper, but honestly, I didn't really notice a difference. Now, granted, I'm not really the biggest power user, and the things I do on a regular basis don't really require that much processing power anyway. I mean, I feel like if I had a Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, for example, I would personally get by just fine. But regardless, when it comes to processing power, I feel like there's a point where once a phone gets past a certain level, you're really not going to notice a huge difference from one phone to the other. Like, for example, if you compare this phone to something like the iPhone SE or the Google Pixel 6a. Sure, one of those phones is going to be faster than the others on paper, but really they're all going to be able to do the same kind of thing. So if you are looking for a phone around that flagship level, then again, for the money, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is going to be a great choice, and honestly, I don't really think many people are actually going to need a faster phone than this. Now, I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 5, and here are the results I got. So what you can do is run this test on your current phone and then compare your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone's going to be a performance upgrade for you. But in general, honestly, I feel like this phone is at the level where if your phone is actually faster than this, you're pretty much going to know already, because at this point, there's really only a handful of phones out there that are. But yeah, again, in general, when it comes to performance, I feel like for most people, you're not really going to need a whole lot more than this, and sure, if you want something like an S23 Ultra, by all means, go for it. But if you are looking for a more affordable device that has close to that level in performance, then again, this phone is definitely a great option. Now when it comes to the battery, this is one area where I feel like most people aren't too big a fan of. Now this phone does have a 4500mAh battery that not only supports 25W fast charging, but also has wireless charging too. So on paper, it is really good. But that being said, in my experience and the experience of a lot of people in my comments, the battery life honestly just really isn't that great. Now personally, this doesn't really affect me too much because I typically have my phone plugged in 90% of the time anyway. So for me, I barely even notice. But if you are in a situation where you're not always around a charger, and you do have to use your phone a lot throughout the day, then you might run into some problems here. Now for me, if I'm in that situation and I'm traveling or something, I personally have a battery pack like this, 
it's dead right now, so I can't really show you. But basically, since the S21 FE, again, does support wireless charging, you can get pretty much anything like this. I think they're like 20 bucks on Amazon. But in general, the bottom line here is, on one hand, there definitely are some workarounds. You can always get a battery pack, get a better charger, something like that. But if you really do want a phone that has a great battery life, then keep in mind, with the S21 FE, in my opinion, just based on my experience, it is at least okay, but honestly, compared to a lot of phones out there, it's not the best. But that brings me to my next point in that if you are looking for more of a higher end device like this, compared to something like the Google Pixel 6a or the iPhone SE, which is pretty much this phone's direct competitors, you're really not going to do a whole lot better. I mean, for some reason, entry level flagship phones and even lots of normal flagship phones for that matter, just don't really have great batteries. For example, look at the iPhone 13. Sure, the Pro Max might be different, but my iPhone 13, which is basically the normal model, doesn't really have the best battery either. So the point here is, if you are looking for a higher end device like this, despite having some benefits, the battery is definitely one of the more common drawbacks. Now for the software, this phone does have Android 13, which is honestly not surprising considering this is first of all a Samsung, which is already known to have really good software support, but also as a more high-end device, I would hope it would have the newest version of Android. But as far as long-term software support goes, this phone should be getting two or three more updates. So if you do want to get this phone and keep it for a longer time, then again, keep in mind, the software support on this phone is definitely good. In addition to this, this kind of goes without saying considering this is technically a flagship phone, but the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE also does have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you're not going to have a problem with that either. Now taking a look at the overall design, one thing that's probably expected at this point is that with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, we're not getting a headphone jack. So if you're coming from maybe an older flagship phone and you're expecting that all phones nowadays still have headphone jacks, just keep in mind, unfortunately, that's definitely not the case and pretty much no higher end phone is going to have one. So if you do want to use wired headphones, keep in mind you will need an adapter. Aside from that though, the design here is pretty nice. We are getting real thin bezels all around. And again, the hole punch front facing camera, unlike the giant notch in the iPhone 13, for example, is definitely a nice look. Now, that being said, I feel like when it comes to the actual materials, it's not too bad. I mean, the phone is pretty much made of plastic, except I honestly don't know what the side material is. It's either metal or like a hard plastic, and it does feel pretty nice. But compared to something like an iPhone or the Google Pixel 6a, the S21 FE, while having good build quality, doesn't feel nearly as premium, and it doesn't have nearly as much weight to it. So, on one hand, while it doesn't feel cheap per se, it honestly, in my opinion, really doesn't feel like a flagship phone either. I mean, again, compared to my iPhone 13, the iPhone 13 feels so much more premium, albeit probably not nearly as durable. But still, the bottom line is, if you're getting a phone like this, I feel like a lot of people might be expecting more of a premium look and feel. So just keep in mind if that's really important to you, which it may or may not be, then this phone might be a little disappointing compared to something like an iPhone or the Google Pixel 6a. But if you don't really care about that, then just keep in mind, the S21 FE at least does have really good build quality, and the materials are pretty good too. But in conclusion, about a year after I originally got it, do I still think the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is worth buying? Now honestly, I feel like at this point, the S21 FE is even more worth buying than it was originally when it came out. The reason I say this is because, again, this phone is quite a bit more affordable than it once was. I mean, when it originally came out, it was something around $800, and now you can easily get it for around $400, if not quite a bit less. So if you are looking for a phone that has a really nice looking display for consuming content, a really high quality camera with a bunch of different features that also can record really high quality 4K videos, you want a good amount of storage and don't really mind not having micro SD card expansion, and you want features like NFC, wireless charging, a really fast processor, and great long term software support that you typically find in higher end devices, then in that case, for the money, I do think the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is not only worth it, but at this point, it's really one of the best options. Now once again, if you do want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I will be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram, and as always, I will see you in the next video.